Shri Guru Biyana Maha children, I am happy and excited to meet you all once again in our online English class. Today we are going to see a prose lesson from chapter 7 of your class 9 English book. Let's get started children. So the lesson is packing written by Jerome K. Jerome. When do we actually go? Have you been on a trip children? Have you been on a trip anytime? What do we require for going on a trip? Yes, we need to pack, make food, travel accommodations, lots are there. So the first basic things comes to packing. We need to pack things we need. And uh, the contents of the packing varies depending upon the trips we take. So here we are going to see a lesson packing by Jerome K. Jerome. Let us know about the author before moving into the lesson. Jerome K. Jerome was born in 2nd May 1859 and he died in 14th June 1927. He was an author, playwright and an editor and he has written a very famous comic book, Three Men on the Boat. Okay, this is also, this lesson is also an extract taken from the same comic, Three Men in a Boat. So, we will get started into the lesson. I said, I'd pack. I'd rather pride myself on my packing. Packing is one of those many things that I feel I know more about than any other person living. I said I would pack. So here we see the lesson is starting with I. Here the I refers to the writer who is Jerome K. Jerome. So E is also there in the story. So he says that he would pack. So he is starting the lesson by he is willing to pack. I would rather pride myself. I am pride. Pride means I am proud of myself. Okay, I take pride okay, in my talents about packing. So the author says he is proud of his packing skills. I rather pride myself on my packing. Packing is one of most Many things that I feel I know more about than any other person living. So he says that he is too well versed in packing, that he is more, he knows more about packing than anybody living. Okay. It surprises me myself sometimes how many such things are there. So he knows lot many things and he is surprised of himself because so much of talents he has. I impressed the fact upon George and Harris and told them that they had better leave the whole matter entirely to me. So the story opens with a packing scene wherein we find the author and his two friends George and Harris who are helping there in the packing. So what the writer is trying to do is he is trying to say that he would better pack and they both would take a leave. Because he knows too much about packing and so he is willing to help and he is willing to do the job himself. So he says, you better leave, I will do the packing. They fell into the suggestion with a readiness that had something uncanny about it. So the moment the writer offered to help in packing, not offering to help, he, he told, I will pack it by myself. When he said this, the friends, they accepted this readily. And this was something uncanny. Uncanny means strange. So the writer couldn't understand why these two fellows are readily accepting to my offer. Are they feeling relieved of work? Are they going to put the entire work on me? So all these things were going into the mind of the writer. George spread himself over the easy chair and Harris cocked his legs on the table. So the moment the writer jumped in for packing, both of them took leave and they started relaxing themselves. They didn't offer any help. We could see George, he spread himself on the easy chair. He goes and sits on the easy chair while Harris, you could see Harris, Harris, he cocked his legs on the table. Cocked his legs is a position where we put the knee, okay, we bend the leg and put it over on the knee. That is called as cocked. So, he is sitting in such a fashion and they both of them are relaxing while the writer is packing. Okay, children. The 
This was hardly what I intended. What I had meant, of course, was that I should boss the job and that Harris and George should potter about under my directions. I pushing them aside every now and then with, Ho oh, you, here, let me do it. So what was the writer's thought, okay, intended means meant or thought. So what the poet meant, no, sorry, not about the writer meant was, he wanted to be bossing around, okay, he uh, would just supervise the packing done by George and Harris, okay. He would offer help when they did any mistake. I should boss the job when George and Harris should potter. Potter means do something. Irrelevant. Okay, they must be doing, while packing, they must be doing some things which are not required and uh, the writer would come inside and would help him offer help or supervise or manage them. And every now and then he wanted to say, what are you people doing? Why are you doing like this? Move, I'll help. So this was what the writer intended to do. There you are, simple enough, really teaching them as you might say. So he wanted to teach them, okay, whenever they made mistake, he wanted to come in and tell them what was the right thing to do. So that was what the uh, writer intended to do actually. Their taking it in the way they did irritated me. So when he offered help, when he came in to pack, they both left the place. They both went to relax and they readily accepted his offer. So this irritated the writer or the Jerome K. Jerome. There is nothing does irritate me more than seeing other people sitting about doing nothing when I am working. So when author or the writer was packing, George and Harris were relaxing. This um, way of sitting and relaxing while the writer was working bugged the writer. He was irritated to the core. When he was working, others were relaxing. They didn't mind to come and help. So he was irritated within. I lived with a man once who used to make me mad that way. He would loll on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hour together. So now he gives us his own flashback. He says that he once lived with a man who was so lazy, okay, who would loll on the sofa. Loll means what? recline and relax okay he would recline and relax on the sofa and he would watch the writer doing the work he would not come and help he would sit there watching the writer doing the work he said it did him real good to look on at me messing about so that man would say the writer it is a, it is a very good way to pass the time by looking you to work. Okay, When you work and when I sit without doing nothing and watching, it is so nice to watch somebody work and somebody relaxing. Now, I am not like that. I can't sit still and see another man slaving and working. I want to get up and superintend and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell them what to do. It is my energetic nature. I can't help it. So he is saying, I am not like that. I am not a person who would see others work. When somebody is working, I would go and lend my help. I am not a person who would sit and watch okay, somebody working. So that is my nature. I am energetic. I want to lend help. I cannot sit back and watch somebody slaving. Slaving means what? Working. Shall we move further, children? However, I didn't say anything but started the packing. It seemed a longer job than I had thought it was going to be. But I got the bag finished at last and I sat on it and strapped it. 
So somehow all these things were going into the minds of the writer. He was thinking about a man, he was thinking, he was getting irritated about George and Harris, everything was going, but he did not convey anything to anybody. He was silently packing, okay, and it took a longer time than he had actually thought it would take. So after finishing everything, what he did, he goes and sits on top of it to strap it. To strap it means what? To lock it. So when the bag is overflowing, it would be difficult to strap it, yes or no children? So somebody has to apply pressure on top of it to lock it. Aren't you going to put the boots in, said Harris. And I looked around and found I had forgotten them. So after with a heavy labor, okay, after strapping the suitcase or strapping the bag, Harris is now reminding, aren't you going to put the boots inside? Whether you're going to leave the boots outside or it is to be packed. Okay, after packing everything, he reminds this. Okay, so when uh, the, uh, the writer looks around, he finds that he has left the boots out. Okay, he didn't know what to do. He had forgotten to pack it. That's just like Harris. He couldn't have said a word until I had got the bag shut and strapped, of course. And George laughed, one of those irritating and senseless laughs of his. They do make me so wild. So the author was bugged up because he didn't remind him to put the boots when it was open. After locking, after all the pains, he is just reminding your boots are outside. And this George also started laughing at this scene. So both of them were irritating the writer to the maximum possible and he was bugged. He was irritated. I opened the bag and packed the boots in and then just as I was going to close it, a horrible idea occurred to me. Had I packed my toothbrush? So he had put the boots, okay, boots was there outside lying. So he put the boots inside. When he was about to close, suddenly something occurred in his mind. He just thought about his toothbrush, whether I have packed my toothbrush. So that was the thought going inside the writer. I don't know how it is, but I never do know whether I have packed my toothbrush. So every time when a writer comes for packing and every time there is a trouble remembering about the toothbrush, whether he has packed it or not. My toothbrush is a thing that haunts me when I am traveling and makes my life a misery. I dream that I haven't packed it and wake up in a cold perspiration and get out of bed and hunt for it. So every time when the packing or when the trip was going, his toothbrush was a problem. Okay, he didn't remember whether he packed the toothbrush or not. He would even dream. Okay, it haunts him so much. Okay, the thought is so obsessive that it haunts him so bad that out of the dream, okay, even in his dream, he thinks about his toothbrush and he wakes up in between with a cold perspiration. Perspiration means what? Sweat. So he, as though a nightmare has come, he wakes up with a cold perspiration in search of his brush. And in the morning, I pack it before I have used it. So what he does, before using the brush, he would put it in the bag and he would pack and then he would keep searching for the brush. And have to unpack again to get it. And it is always the last thing I turn out of the bag and then I repack it and forget it. So before brushing, he would pack it. And again, he would take the contents of the suitcase and search for it and then again pack it. So this redoing of um, the contents, okay, putting it in and putting it out in search of a toothbrush was a very big job for the writer. And have to rush upstairs for it at the last moment and carry it to the railway station wrapped up in my pocket handkerchief. So in order for a convenience sake, what he does, he doesn't put the toothbrush in his suitcase. He carries it with his um, handkerchief. He would wrap the toothbrush with his handkerchief and he would carry it to the railway station. Of course, I had to turn every mortal thing out now. And of course, I could not find it. I rummaged the things up into much the same state that they must have been 
before the world was created when chaos reigned. So now the toothbrush is missing or he does not know whether he has packed the toothbrush or not. So he has to take the entire contents out and hunt for the toothbrush. So he rummaged means what he destroyed, he spoiled the order. Okay? And a total confusion was going on there. So every contents was put outside and uh, it was looking so messed. Okay? Chaos means what? It was mess. Of course, I found George and Harris 18 times over, but I could not find my own. So, on this process of searching his, his toothbrush, he found the toothbrush of Harris and George 18 times. Nearly 18 times he was able to spot the toothbrush of his friends, but he was not able to find his own toothbrush. I put the things back one by one and held everything up and shook it. Then I found it inside a boot. I repacked once more. So what he did, he could not find. So he takes every content, he shakes it to see if it is hidden inside. So he shakes the contents, the dresses and then at last he found out the brush was inside the boots. Okay. Then what he did, he took it and then repacked every When I had finished, George asked if the soap was in. I said I did not care a hang whether the soap was in or whether it was not. So after everything, so you could imagine the, um, you know, how the mood of the writer, how irritated he must be, okay. Even the single thing is taking him lots of pain, okay. He has to do the packing one uh, again and again, okay, to find even a single thing. Okay, now he was about to finish, toothbrush problem was over and he was about to close the suitcase or the bag. Suddenly his friend George is asking whether you have put the soap inside. Now the writer has become furious. I do not care a damn whether I have put the soap inside or not. Let it be inside or let it not be inside. Now I am not bothered because I cannot do the packing once more. And slammed the bag and shut and strapped it and found that I had packed my spectacles in it and had to reopen it. So he says, I am not going to bother whether the soap is there or not. Okay, let it be there or not there. So he slammed. Slam means what? Closing with much force. Okay, closing with force. Okay. So he slammed the bag shut and he strapped it, he has locked it. Only after that he remembers that he has put his spectacles inside and he has locked. Now the spectacles which he has to use is there again in the locked up in the suitcase. So he had to reopen the bag. I got shut up finally at 10.05 pm and then there remained the hampers to do. So finally all the chaos were over he found the spectacles and the packing was finished at 10 pm at night. Only the hampers were there. Hampers means basket to carry food. So here you could see the picture of a hamper. Only the hamper was remaining to be done. The food items and the edible things were to be packed. Only that was there. All the other material things were packed and kept ready by the writer and only this hampers were yet to be done. Harris said that we should be wanting to start in less than 12 hours time and thought that he and George had better do the rest and I agreed and sat down and they had a go. So now George and Harris they come okay they tell the writer uh, that there are only 12 more hours to leave so you better take rest. And myself and Harry would do the hamper job. Okay, we would, we would arrange the hampers. So this writer accepts this and he takes a leave. He goes and relaxes. They began in a light hearted spirit. Evidently intending to show me how to do it. So a light hearted spirit means what? Cheerfully. Okay, they wanted, they started doing this packing job cheerfully. Okay, to show evidently intending means what they wanted to show, they wanted to prove the writer how to do packing at ease. 
okay packing uh, brighter was boasting about his packing skills and at last he was fed up of his packing so now it is their turn and they wanted to prove how easily they are going to do the packing okay so to intending to show how to do it i made no comment so here is i is a writer so writer is not making any comment he is just waiting okay you continue let me see what you are doing so that is how the writer was he was waiting i only waited with the exception of george harris is the worst packer in this world okay he says he is now giving george is fine with packing harris is the worst person who could do packing he doesn't know how to pack so they both are now going to sit and pack the interesting things are yet to come the things are going to spice up a bit so he was waiting to see how well they were packing i looked and i looked at the piles of plates and cups and kettles and bottles and jars and pies and stuffs and cakes and tomatoes etc so every edible thing the utensils everything was piled up was scattered over the place and felt that thing would soon become exciting so he was waiting so everything was scattered it was only a mess so he definitely knew these two are not going to do nothing worthwhile okay they are going to do some mess so he was waiting for them to commit the mess they started with breaking a cup that was the first thing they did they did that just to show you what they could do and to get you interested so the first incident is coming they break the cup okay the packing is going on with the hamper and they break the cup so that was the first thing and they wanted to do they wanted to show they are capable of more than this okay not only breaking of cup some more i had to come so the things are going to become more interested in a short while i leave you here children with a little surprise and i would like to continue in the next class and see how interesting the chapter goes thank you children